So you got a request for quote, you quoted out the work, and now the purchaser is coming back and either asking for a price reduction or is asking you to match another shop's price. Do you do it or do you run as fast as you can away from that? What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Shop Talk, we're gonna be diving into exactly that question. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. So as promised, today on Shop Talk, we're gonna be heading back into the Practical Machinist forms. Uh, this was in the Shop Management and Ownership subform to tackle a question that was posed by a user that I found really, really interesting. Um, mostly because the discussion on it was very, very interesting. So I highly recommend you check this thread out. It's gonna be linked in the uh, you know show notes here below. But what happened was a guy came on and he had a potential customer who had approached him. Um, he had not done work with this company before, but the purchaser, and he referred to him as a purchaser, so I'm assuming this is a you know larger company where they have purchasing type people. But he got approached with a package of drawings, you know, as these things tend to happen, and was asked to quote out some work. So this guy went through and looked at the drawings, got all his setups in there for his quoting, um, quoted out the material, did all the stuff that goes into quoting. Any of you guys who do quoting know that this stuff can take a while. And he said, you know, it was a decent amount of work. Sends off the quote and everything looked good. Purchaser came back to him a couple days later and said, hey, listen, you know what? Your pricing is high. Uh, I gotta go somewhere else. I got a better price from another shop but do you want to match this price? Now the guy who came on and posed this, uh, this thread did say that the pricing that this purchaser was posing to him to match, it was still, still realistic. It wasn't, you know, he was here and the purchaser was asking him to go here. I think, you know, it was probably about here and here. The guy said, yeah, you know what, it made sense. So I said, sure, but the timelines didn't end up working out for this job. So he didn't end up doing it. Fine, no problem, this kind of thing happens. Anyways, a few days later, or a few weeks later, the purchaser comes back to him and says, hey, listen, I have another job coming up. Would you like to quote? The guy says, sure, absolutely. Gets another package of drawings, goes through the whole thing, quotes out the material, quotes out the setups, quotes out the runtime, everything that goes into it, sends it off. The purchaser immediately got back to him and the feedback was good. He was saying, you know, hey, listen, this looks great, um, and really made it sound like an order was coming. So this guy was pretty much ready to do the job. Great success, things look good. Until the day of this posting when this guy posted the uh, uh, thread, the purchaser had come back again and said, hey, you're too high. Can you price match me down here again from another company? So this guy basically came on and said, you know, this is happening again. What do I do here? Do you guys in the forum, do you guys price match if you were offered that? And what do you basically do with a purchasing agent or a potential customer who is constantly asking for price reductions? Happens all the time. So it was a fantastic question. To start off, the poster who put this question up there did kind of mention what they think is happening. And this is also what myself and others in that thread agreed is probably happening. And that's basically that this purchasing agent is going and getting multiple quotes from different shops for the work. And first off, you know, we just did a video on how this works when you're working with vendors. This is actually a really good practice. There's nothing wrong with getting quotes from multiple shops on a job or every job if you have the time. Not only does it help make sure that you're getting the best price, which is why, you know, in that previous video, that's kind of what I was focusing on. And a lot of people focus on that aspect of it when you're talking about getting multiple quotes. The other thing that it can help keep you out of trouble with is if you go get a job quoted out at four different shops or four different material prices or whatever it is, and you get three at $100 and you get one at $20, right off the bat, that tells you something. That tells you that either that company missed something at the $20 when they were quoting it, or you're gonna see some of the worst parts, material, or service you have ever seen. So not only is it good to help protect yourself on price, they can actually help protect you from getting in other bad situations. So I highly recommend you do this. Purchasing agent is doing nothing wrong here. 
The problem I'm seeing here is that not only is this purchasing agent going and getting multiple quotes for a job, but they're using them like a club to go beat down every shop to see who wants to race to the bottom. Who's gonna be desperate enough to play this game? That's, that to me is where the issue lies. Right off the bat for both me and other people in that thread, this is a huge red flag, huge red flag. Um, first off, it shows a few things. The first one is the chances of this customer being easy to deal with going forward just went way down. Um, if you're dealing with a potential customer that you haven't done any work for, they've never paid you, you have no working relationship, and they are so laser focused on price, this hard where they're beating you up on it, that's not gonna change. That is going to be the way that these people do business every time they do it. You can guarantee even if you get that work and you play the game to get that work, you're gonna be playing that game again when they wanna reorder, you're gonna be playing that game on every single order, and this situation is not going to go away. That's not a type, you know, some companies do this. Some companies say this is the way of doing business. They're chasing price, whatever. I personally, and a lot of guys in the threads, agreed that we have better ways to spend our time chasing work that actually makes money with companies that are a little more professional, in my opinion, rather than constantly trying to justify every dollar I'm getting out of this company. It just sounds exhausting. Uh, obviously, if you're dead, if you were struggling, you may be willing to play this game, but it's not a game you want to play. Secondly, and this is a this is a bit of a general generaliz generalization on my part. I'm going to say that right, but I don't know this this person or this company, so I'm making some assumptions here. But I would be very wary if this happened to me of trusting a single price match quote that this company is sending me. We've said it before. We've said it again. We like to think we're dealing with nice, rational, thinking business people out there. Some people are not good people. There's nothing you can do about it. They see profit over whatever else. I don't know if those prices that that company is giving me to match are real or not. Or are they just basically throwing this out at different companies and seeing who's gonna bite? I don't know if that's the scenario there, but if this happened to me, my hackles would be raised and I would definitely think twice before getting involved with this company because it sounds like we have a little bit of shadiness right off the bat. To the matter of price matching or reducing my quoted price, my opinion on this was generally the same as the form. And that was, no, I don't reduce pricing, but, because there's always a but. First off, just to speak for myself, I'm not a computer, I'm not a spreadsheet, I am human, I make mistakes. I use a lot of tools when I'm quoting out my, uh, my work and my jobs. You know, I have spreadsheets that I use with formulas that I've developed over the years. Um, you know, simple things with rate per hours and different machines. Um, I have structures that I use. I have all that kind of stuff. But the other part of quoting, and you know, we've talked about it before, is that it is a little bit of a dark art. And a big part of quoting comes down to gut instinct and intuition. I hate to say it, but it's true. But that gut instinct and intuition is informed by years of experience. Um, you know, sometimes I just know by looking at a part because I've been doing quoting for 10, 12 years, I kind of know what that part is going to cost roughly. So I kind of have an idea of where it's gonna be. And that's something you learn as you go. And I think that's pretty similar with every industry. You know, we're not doing flooring where literally you measure out square footage, you know, times length by height, and then know how many hours it's gonna to take to do. There's a lot more that goes into it. And part of that is also knowing your customer and knowing your industry. If I'm doing work for a certain industry, I know I can bill here. If I'm doing work for another industry, I know they average about here. It's all these little things that go into quoting. That said, since there is a good element of gut in there, people make mistakes. When I made that quote, maybe I was tired. Maybe I was annoyed and I was just throwing numbers at a page because I was in a bad mood. Maybe I just missed something and I made a mistake. All these things happen. I've sent out quotes before and definitely had situations where I've sent out a quote and the customer has come back and said, you're high, can you reduce it? I've taken a second look and said, you know what, you're absolutely right. I am high on this one, so I'm gonna go down. Got the job, made good money, relationship was preserved. These situations do exist, but they tend to be with customers that you have a longer or more trustworthy, you know, you've built the trust and relationship so you know they're not out just to beat you up on price and chase you to the bottom. 
if one of my best customers comes to me and says, Ian, your pricing is high, I know they're not just trying to beat me up on it, so I'm willing to work with them on it. They're trying to give me the work, they just need me to reduce my pricing. Not a problem, that's called being flexible. That said, I definitely fall in line with a forum most of the time on this issue, and that is that my price is my price, that's it. Um, to put it bluntly, this thread was absolutely full of stories of people who did go along with these kind of purchasers or companies who tried to chase them down and beat them up on pricing constantly. I did not see one positive story where they said, yeah, do you know what, I had a company do this to me. We got through it and we had a great working relationship. Pretty much they were all horror stories of eventually they got the screws turned to them or you know they just ended up not working with them because it was a waste of time. I know in threads like this and with these kind of stories, there is a bit of a survivorship bias. You know, We're not gonna see some guy come on probably and say, hey, do you know what? This is actually all I do. You're gonna kind of see the horror stories because those are the stories people wanna share. That said, this thread was full of people basically saying, do not do this, this is why I had this experience. Um, and I agree with that. I've had this kind of scenario happen as well and I, I would agree with that kind of perspective. Though earlier I did admit that a big part of quoting is, you know, a little bit of gut feeling, a little bit of black magic, a little bit of the intangible. At the end of the day, we're still not pulling pricing out of thin air. I don't look at a part and say $100. You know, there is a lot that goes into it. Because of that, you know, if we've been doing this for a minute, if I look at a part, I quote it out, I do all the work that goes into it, and I say this part is gonna be $20, there's absolutely no reason why I should go accept someone to beat me up down to $10 on it. If I know what it costs us to make it, if I know where I'm giving them a fair price, if this is you know in line with the market, I should be, feel comfortable standing behind that $20 price point and not get beat up on it. Might I go to 18 if it's a huge customer that I do a lot of work for? Sure, but there's no reason why. If you've put the work into it and you truly believe that that part's gonna cost X, there's no reason why you should allow yourself to get beat up to X minus 20%. There's exceptions to every rule. Um, you know, as a lot of people said in there, if you're too rigid on pricing and you know, you're banging the table saying, my price is my price, you like it or you get out, you're probably not gonna have a lot of customers. You do need to be flexible. You need to be able to take feedback. That doesn't mean, flexible doesn't mean allowing yourself to get bullied by customers that you don't currently do, well, customers that you don't currently do work for or constantly getting beat up on price or dealing with a customer base that's abusive and they exist out there. So you gotta kinda learn to toe that line. But anyways, I thought this was a very interesting discussion that way. With all that said, I would like to know in the comments below, how do you deal with this kind of scenario? Do you price match? Do you have a horror story where you price matched? What do you do when a customer asks for a price reduction? Please let us know in the comments below because I found this to be a very interesting conversation. I'd like to know what you guys think. Also, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.